The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ be with you all. Welcome to worship with Eastminster Presbyterian Church. I'd invite those of you who live locally to drive by the church today, May 31st, between 1 and 3 p.m. to pick up a journal and a craft project that will accompany our summer sermon series, as well as an updated church directory. If you do not live locally, we'd still love for you to be able to have one of our summer journals. So we have an event on Facebook and a form in there for you to fill out if you would like us to mail you the journal. Also, next week, next Sunday, we are going to be celebrating communion together. So as you prepare for worship next week, have some bread and juice ready so that we can partake together. My friends, today is the day of Pentecost. We have been spending time together each week, being reminded that love is at the heart of who we are and who we are called to be. We have been given the Holy Spirit as an advocate to help us, guide us, giving us strength, courage, and overflowing gratitude for each other. We have been inspired by the early Christian community, one that was often under difficult circumstances, but continued to support each other along the way. So today, as we finish up this series, we once again create a temple of worship in our hearts and in our homes that connects us across boundaries, distance, and time. Through this act of worship, we stay connected because at the heart of the matter, we are connected through the Holy Spirit that makes us one in love. A spark. That is all we need on this day, imaginative God, to light our quarantined aloneness so that we can burst into bonfires, which signal to all those around us that you are bringing life and grace to us and to the whole world. A word. Just one little word on this day, poet of Pentecost, so that we can be the voice of all those forgotten by the world, so that we can be the warmth to melt all the hearts frozen by greed, so that we might speak in that still, small voice and be the ones that live out your good news to everyone we meet. A breeze, a soft, gentle breeze that stirs the curtains on this day, shattering spirit. A breeze that will stay quiet and peaceful and still until the day comes, and it will, for us to become that storm of hopes to clear the despair from all our neighborhoods and lands. Give us yourself this day, God in community, holy in one. Amen. Live in charity and steadfast love. Live in charity, God will dwell with you.
vicaritas et amor, o vicaritas Deus Holy God, holy breath, wind, flame, spirit, set our hearts on fire. Burn off all that is dry and lifeless and grow us anew. Let your spirit dance within our spirits, uprooting us when we have been unmoved and refreshing all that is stale in our lives. Breathe on us your peace that we will share that peace with all we meet. And hear the silent prayers of our heart. Friends, the Lord is compassionate and gracious, slow to anger, abounding in love. Believe the good news. In Jesus Christ, we are forgiven. Thanks be to God. I'd like to invite our younger friends a little bit closer to the computer screen. Hi friends, it's Mr. Neil again, and today is Pentecost. It's an interesting story in the book of Acts, and we'll be hearing it in different languages a little bit later on in the service, and I want you to pay attention to that. But first, I want you to use your imagination. And so I'm showing you this artwork, and I wonder, what is it that you see when you look at this artwork? What shapes, colors? I want you to use your imagination and tell me what you might be able to see. What does this look like for you? Pentecost is the day when we celebrate the gift that God gave us of the Holy Spirit. It talks in the scripture about the sound like wind, images of tongues of fire and different people speaking in different languages. The Holy Spirit is a gift for us. It gives us the gifts that we have. Some of us are gifted in art. Some of us are gifted in being able to sing. Some of us, by the ways we can think and use our mind what gifts have you been given as the service goes on i want you to listen to the story of pentecost and i want you to draw or create or make something that the story makes you think of it doesn't have to be obvious like this artwork it can be your own interpretation because that's the way God works. God made each of us special, and yet we can understand God in our own ways. This is the day of Pentecost, when we celebrate the gifts we've been given by the Holy Spirit. Use your gifts, be creative, and thank God for the Holy Spirit and the birth of the church this day. Amen. Let us pray. Let the fire of your spirit shed light on your word, O God. As we open these pages, may we find a breath of fresh air, a word for our hearts, a light for our path. Amen.
When the day of Pentecost had come, they were all together in one place. And suddenly from heaven there came a sound like the rush of a violent wind, and it filled the entire house where they were sitting. Divided tongues as of fire appeared among them, and a tongue rested on each of them. All of them were filled with the Holy Spirit and began to speak in other languages as the Spirit gave them ability. Ils furent tous remplis du Saint Esprit et se mirent à parler en d'autres langues, comme l'Esprit leur donnait de s'exprimer. Now there were devout Jews from every nation. Devout Jews from every nation under heaven living in Jerusalem. Jerusalem je tehdy pobývali zbožní Židé z každého národa na světě. Holo Jerusalem si u něj udevolni. At this sound, the crowd gathered and was bewildered because each one heard them speaking in the native language of each. Amazed and astonished, they asked, Are not all these who are speaking Galileans? Ils étaient tous remplis d'étonnement et d'admiration, et ils se disaient les uns aux autres, Ces gens qui parlent se sont-ils pas tous les Galileans? Užasem bez sebe říkali, hledte, co pak ti všichni, kdo tu mluví, nejsou galilejci? Estaban asombrados y se maravillaban, diciendo, Miren, ¿no son galileos todos estos que están hablando? And how is it that, that we hear each of us in our own native language? Fakefa nesma nahnu kul wahid minna lugataha aleti walid fiha. Parthians, Medes, Elamites, and residents of Mesopotamia. Judea and Cappadocia, Pontius and Asia, Phrygia and Pamphylia. Egypt and the parts of Libya belonging to Cyrene and visitors from Rome, both Jews and proselytes. Christians and Arabs, in our own languages, we hear them speaking about God's deeds of power. All were amazed and perplexed, saying to one another, what does this mean? Tous remplis d'étonnement et ne sachant que penser, ils se disaient les uns aux autres, qu'est-ce que cela veut dire? Todos estaban asombrados y perplejos, diciéndose unos a otros, ¿qué quiere decir esto? Všichni žásli a nevěděli, co si o tom myslet. Co má tohle znamenat? Přáli se jeden druhého. Ukvěr da kvalec da gaugnebul neobnebul den ertmanec, raz mu a stavu ses. But others sneered and said, they are filled with new wine. Mais d'autres se moquaient, disaient, ils sont pleins de vin doux. But Peter, standing with the eleven, raised his voice and addressed them. Men of Judea and all who live in Jerusalem, let this be known to you and listen to what I say. Indeed, these are not drunk, as you suppose, for it is only nine o'clock in the morning. No, this is what was spoken through the prophet Joel. Mais maintenant se réalise ce qu'a dit le prophète Joël. In the last days it will be, God declares, that I will pour out my spirit upon all flesh, and your sons and your daughters shall prophesy, and your young men shall see visions, and your old men shall dream dreams. Even upon my slaves, both men and women, in those days I will pour out my spirit, and they shall prophesy. And I will show portents in the heaven above, and signs on the earth below, blood and fire and smoky mist. The sun shall be turned to darkness, and the moon to blood, before the coming of the Lord's great and glorious day. Then everyone who calls on the name of the Lord shall be saved. Alors toute personne qui fera appel au nom du Seigneur sera sauvée. Taikneba ase, kuela wins uchma v'sachel suplisas.
as a child, Pentecost was one of my favorite liturgical days. And yes, I was enough of a church kid that I knew what Pentecost meant. Pentecost meant that we came to the church and had a party. Everyone wore red, young, and old alike. Balloons filled the sanctuary. Pentecost also meant that we'd have birthday cake after the service. On Pentecost, even Presbyterians are willing to employ a little extra creativity with decorations and drama, candles, and balloons. When the day of Pentecost had come, they were all together in one place. I confess that this year, that opening sentence from our reading from the book of Acts, it makes me sad. It's harder this year to celebrate a great feast day like Pentecost when we can't gather in person for worship and fellowship. But we are in one place in another sense. We are in a hard place, a place of vulnerability and grief, a place of waiting, waiting for the Spirit to breathe upon us, to reveal to us what this all means. As I've wrestled, with the text this week, the story of the coming of the Holy Spirit, it's made me wonder what the disciples were actually feeling on that first Pentecost day. They were all together in one place, waiting for the promised Holy Spirit. Because Jesus told them the Holy Spirit would come, but not how. And Jesus told them the Holy Spirit would come, but not when. And all of a sudden, as they're in one place, there's wind and fire and languages. Before long, Peter's preaching to the crowds, and then they're all going out into places they have no business going, saying things to people that they wouldn't have dreamed to say before, and doing what earlier they might have said was impossible. I tend to focus on Pentecost about what a gift the Holy Spirit is, and the Holy Spirit is a gift. The coming of the Holy Spirit was and is a good thing, an amazing thing. And it's also a really, really hard thing. The easy path for the disciples after Jesus ascended would be to go back to their former lives what they knew before they met Jesus. To go back to what was comfortable and chalk up this whole experience to an adventure that, thank goodness, is now over. But the, instead, the Holy Spirit comes and their lives get even more dangerous and complicated. The text tells us after the Holy Spirit comes, they are bewildered, amazed, and astonished. These aren't necessarily pleasant emotions. They are bewildered, amazed, and astonished because this is some crazy life upending stuff. Many Christian traditions use the dove as a primary symbol for the Holy Spirit. The dove which descended upon Jesus at his baptism and is a symbol of peace or shalom. Celtic Christians do not use the dove as their primary symbol for the Holy Spirit. They chose the wild goose as a way to talk about the Spirit. Now, as someone who avoids geese at all costs because of my fear of them, this image stopped me in my tracks. Wild goose, something that is loud, often frightening, and leaves a mess 
everywhere. For them, the untamed, uncontrollable, erratic nature of the wild goose better characterizes the movement of the spirits. For a wild goose is always on the move, doing unexpected things. It is loud, passionate, sometimes frightening, and certainly unsettling. This is definitely been more like my experience of the Holy Spirit than the peaceful, tranquil dove. On Pentecost, I imagine the crowds gathered together, torn between wanting to get close to touch the wild goose and yet terrified by it, asking each other, what does this mean? The Holy Spirit moves through their gathering and together they try to make sense of the beautiful mess left in its wake. What does this mean? Sometimes the Holy Spirit comes and creates a holy mess. Because the Holy Spirit, I think, wants to draw us out of our comfort zones and stir in us a desire to become less preoccupied with ourselves and more concerned with our neighbors. As I've thought about previous Pentecosts and sermons I've preached and celebrations in buildings, I've realized that a theme I've often focused on is the hope to allow the spirit to move us outside of our building, outside of our comfort zone. Now this wasn't necessarily what I had in mind. And while I do not believe that God caused this pandemic or has willed it upon us, I do believe that the Holy Spirit can use this time to create something new that the Holy Spirit is alive and moving as we learn new ways of being the church outside of our buildings. For we see over and over again that before new life, there is struggle and challenge. And before resurrection, there is death. So on this Pentecost, here's the questions I'm asking, and I invite you to ask them with me. As we wait for the birth of what might be, what of our old lives, what of our old lives personally and in the church and in our country needs to be burned away? And what needs to be renewed? What of our old lives personally and communally needs to be burned away and what needs to be renewed and how is the holy spirit agitating pushing challenging us to find new life to love our neighbor to get to the heart of the matter in these days Like those who gathered on that first Pentecost day, let's keep asking questions together, staying open to the Holy Spirit, to the wild goose who calls us to be witnesses, who endows us with the gifts we need, who invites us to engage with hope and love. It's Pentecost, my friends, and the church is gathered.
Holy Spirit fall, fall afresh on me. I invite you to take out your phone and text a church member or a friend or a family member and say, the peace of Christ be with you.
Good morning, Eastminster friends. The wind is tickling my purple iris. I feel very blessed and lucky to be able to enjoy this this morning with the forget-me-nots in the back. May God's Spirit dwell in us all this day. Amen. One of the ways that we can be glad and generous with each other is to share how we are finding strength, hope, love, and peace in these days. We break open our hearts to one another. In the Acts passage, the Holy Spirit is described as wind and fire. What is it that your heart is on fire for? What winds of change do you want to flow through your life? What is at the heart of the matter for you? If you're on Facebook with us, I invite you to complete this sentence in the comment section. The true heart of the matter for me in life is... seen the wind neither you nor I but when the trees are bending down the wind is passing by who has seen the Holy Spirit neither you nor I but when we bend to do God's will the Spirit passes by Christina Rossetti I'd invite you to comment on Facebook if you have a joy or concern to be shared. You can also email me or call me with your prayer concerns. And tomorrow I'll email out a full list of prayer requests to our community. Let us pray. Come, Holy Spirit. Come, Holy Spirit, and fill us with your love. Open our eyes to see the presence of God all around us in the stillness of this time, in the joys and celebrations, 
in the tragedies and struggles that break our hearts. Come Holy Spirit and comfort those who grieve. Grant them the peace that only you can bring. Stir within us a trust in life beyond death. As we ponder the mysteries of Christ's resurrection and the hope we have in new and everlasting life. Come Holy Spirit and bring wholeness to the sick. Strengthen those who are weak. Heal the wounded and broken. Give rest to the weary. Come, Holy Spirit, and inspire our divided, warring world to seek peace, to love our enemies, to put away our weapons, to remember the price paid for our freedom, to care for those who have served. Come, Holy Spirit, and ignite a fire in our bones, a passion for justice that cannot be quenched until all of your children are loved, until no one is marginalized or oppressed, until everyone has the opportunity to thrive, until the world is transformed and renewed. Come, Holy Spirit, and revive your church. Liberate us from complacency and apathy, inspire us with Christ's vision for a world reborn. Help us to recognize our gifts for ministry and to use them in service of others. Transform our hearts and our minds, fill us with love that overflows. Remind us that there is no greater calling than to love you with all that we are and to love our neighbors as ourselves. Gracious God, give us a glimpse of your kingdom emerging around us and drawing us into the new things you are doing in the world. It is for your kingdom that we now pray, filled with your spirit, using the words Jesus taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. God sends the Holy Spirit, gifting us with the ability to serve in a myriad of ways. We are given the gift of faith that enables us to live in hope, love radically, and share generously. I invite you to worship God with your offerings. And today we collect the Pentecost offering along with the gifts of our tithes and pledges to the church. Spirit, dwell among us. Come with me in the Give the church a stronger vision. Help us face each crucial hour. Build upon a firm foundation, 
Jesus Christ, the cornerstone, till the church is called to mission, that God's love shall be made known. We would raise our alleluias for the grace of yesteryears, for tomorrow's unknown pathway. Hear, O Lord, our humble prayers. In the church's pilgrim journey, you have led us all the way. Still in presence move before us, fire by night and cloud by day. Come, O Spirit, dwell among us, give us words of fire flame. Help our feeble lips to praise you. Glorify our holy name. Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, free in one word mystery, we would sing our loud holes on us now and through eternity. We know that Jesus is present among us. We know that Jesus is present among us. Even in this very home. Even in this very home. We will not let fear be louder than love. Not let fear be louder than love. But with glad hearts and rejoicing souls. Glad hearts and rejoicing souls. We will sing God's praise. We will sing God's praise. For we are Easter people. For we are Easter people. For we are Easter people.